Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Log4j. So let's just jump right into it. And in the before time, the long long ago, 2012, there were a version of Log4j called 1.2.17 and it was done. Everything that was required was implemented but it might have missed some features because when you run it, set it up and run it as usual, you get this warning, no appenders are actually available. You have not added anything. You are just trying to log things without any appenders. You see here, I have a bunch of loggers, but they don't log anything because I don't have an appender. So what you had to do back then, and still today, if you're using it, you would need to add an appender. So I will do that and log this out and then it will log exactly the information that I sent to the logger and nothing else and it will use a pattern in order to log that information. You can use configuration files in order to set these values and so on and there is a couple of these appenders that has some security issues that you should not use. Uh, mainly J, the uh, JMS uh, appender that seems to have a bunch of uh, problems with it. So that should not be used. But this is pretty much done. Uh, some at the Apache organization realized that this was not really a good user experience. That you had a logging framework that didn't have any functionality. So they wanted to add to it. So they did a rewrite where they added a lot of bu bunch of functionality and also made some of these appenders uh, default. So let's jump over to that. So now we have jumped forward into the future. We are in 2021 November and the current version that was implemented back then was uh, 2.12 or 2.15, I'm running 2.12 now. And this is version 2 of Log4j. And they had implemented it in a way that some appenders were default. So if we run this log for shell script here, uh, we will see that it will log some things here. It will log uh, test and then the actual OpenJDK that I'm using. So this here template was actually replaced with the Java VM. So I got that information out. I can use the path and I can also write something like this. J and I held up and then localhost 888 and then let's say the path. And the strange part then, as you see in the other window here, is that it actually made a connection to port 888 here, which this was listening to, and it also sent that path. So if you figure out how to handle that and to uh, read the information, you can exfiltrate information from your system just by sending in something that you're logging. And when you're logging things, you might be logging usernames, you might be logging uh, user information like address and so on for debugging purposes. You might be logging user agents and other things that are actually supplied by the user that could be manipulated, which is the problem that we have here. One thing that we could do in order to solve this is to jump to the latest version. And what I believe the latest version to be is uh, 2.17.1. Perhaps uh, we are in, in the future and we have a dot two or a 18 or something. But pretty much after 17.1, this seems to be resolved. You see here that we no longer are actually following these at all. We don't use the templates. We are back to just logging the default behavior and just logging what is actually supplied and nothing else. And I will reset this window over here. And uh, so we see that in this version, we don't really get the connection out and so on. And it was actually worse than this because you could do a connection out and get a Java file back, like a Java class, and then that was runnable. So you can actually inject code into somebody's system and that's not good. So let's go back to this vulnerable version again here. And 
check into some things that we might be able to do in order to mitigate this. So first off, I want to uh, look into this uh, console appender that we have here. So we have a bunch of appenders here and if I do like this, that I get this core logger here. Now we can, we can start by see if we can get more information. So we can actually add something called a warning in our configuration file here, the log for, J, log for J2 XML. If I put this status warning here and I run this script again, we will see that we actually get a bunch of warnings that we are doing things that are not really good and error looking up JNA uh, resources. And we will not get that warning if we actually had a working solution where we could connect the, to these, but you see that you do an LDAP resource lookup with the path, and that's not good. So now we get more information at least. So that, that's something that we can do. We can also go in here and configure the loggers and the appenders and actually remove all appenders. So now we don't get any output, but we also don't run this appender that is um, vulnerable. Uh, if we then again go here and take the core logger out and we can create a console appender. So I have a function for that up here. Um, and this function will uh, take a pattern, some pattern here, and we see also that in the old console appender that we created, we just gave it some clauses and set some values. But now that we have the new fangled fun functionality and more uh, patterns in our rulebook, we have added the builder pattern. So now we will build a pattern layout here, and then we will build a console appender, and then we need to start that console appender, and we will return that. And with, with that little thing, we can run this, and we will get the same issue again. So we see here that the, it's the console appender that actually has this functionality in it, uh, but we can't be really sure there because it could be something else in the framework that does this. So I've written my own appender here. It's very simple. This appender is just taking what is to be append and just uh, write out the formatted message. And if we have this functionality somewhere else, then this formatted message will probably give us some something bad, right? But if I run this console appender here, I will only get the valid output again. So that is not the case. It seems that the appender is the one thing that is uh, vulnerable. Uh, we will switch back to this console appender again that is vulnerable and look into other mitigations that we can do. And I had uh, prepared a function down here where I can do some logging. And if we look at this function, here I have a bunch of different ways we can do programmatically without switching versions. We can change things up. So first off, we have this format message lookup uh, true. That should be working either just by this or if we do log4j2 format lookup message, but I didn't get that to work. Uh, but that should turn off these kind of lookups and that would be a good thing. Another thing is that we can set this environment variable uh, to true and that wo actually works. I have tried that and it will turn off these kind of lookups even in the vulnerable versions. That thing was added in version 2.10. So a long time ago they figured out that these kind of lookups are no good and then it went five versions before somebody actually tried to exploit this and actually uh, figured out how to uh, attack systems. So this has been with us for a long while before they actually removed it. Uh, another thing we can do if we, for instance, know that we are logging a username and we know that that username has A to Z or zero to nine, we can say that replace everything that is not those kind of letters uh, in this uh, logger and it will also not trigger anything here, but the input or 
um, the log message will be a little bit wonky because we will remove a lot of information here. We can also say that we just want to remove these kind of lookup patterns. So we remove uh, the dollar sign, the open bracket and close bracket here and replace those with the uh, spaces. And then we will also have something that is looking pretty similar but will not trigger any outbound calls. So this is the main issue with the log4j that has been exploited and has been in Minecraft and uh, which has been a lot of problems for a lot of companies. Uh, but it's a very simple thing to actually uh, trigger and to exploit. So if you have these kind of versions in your organization, please remove them and replace them with the newer version. Or if you can use the old 1.2 with a simple console appender, a simple file appender or something like that, those are probably not um, vulnerable to these kind of attacks. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have been working with uh, this bug uh, tirelessly during the holidays, leave a comment down below and tell me about your experience. And I really hope to see you in the next video.